Hi guys. So I hope you just read Psalm 66 through now. Psalm 66 is very much a positive psalm. It consists of 20 verses, of which roughly 17 of them are words of praise to God, extorting the reader or listener to praise God or given reasons as to why God is so good and why we should praise him. There are only three verses, verses 10, 11 and 12, which speak of hardships. The suffering in this psalm could be referring to the Israelites' ex uh, experience of escaping slavery and bondage in Egypt, uh, or it could very well refer to Judah's deliverance from the Assyrians. However, it could also be very apt as a personal response to personal experience. Now, this week's theme is on refining, so I'd like to home in on a small section of the psalm, starting with verse 10. You have purified us, O God, you have purified us like silver. Times of testing helps to refine us. The example of refining of silver is used symbolically in this passage. Precious metals are valuable and sought after in their pure form, but to get that pure form, they must go through the process of refining. So silver is removed from the ground as an ore, an impure mix of precious metal and low value other stuff. And it's smelted, which involves a lot of heat and chemical reactions with the dross and impurities removed to leave behind a pure metal. The end result is a lesser quantity of material, but the material that you have is of higher quality. So bear that in mind. We move on through the psalm and read verses 11 and 12. You captured us in your net and laid the burden of slavery on our backs. Then you put a lead over us. We went through fire and flood, but you brought us to a place of great abundance. This is where the hardships of the psalm show through the traumatic experience that the psalmist has been through. There's one small word that I'd like to point out and it crops up in verse 12. It's a small word, but it's the word, but. So the writer shares the hardships and the challenges. And then despite this, praises God, even though the bad things have happened, because God has brought them to, through it, to a place of great abundance. And the definition of abundance is a situation where there is more than enough of something. What the psalmist, he or she, probably he, is saying, the end result was worth more than the trials and difficulties it took to get there. Doesn't that sound like pure silver? Then this is the psalmist's choice to respond this way. He writes about 85% of the psalm praising God, calling people to praise him and to share his great name, affirming him, telling a positive story of what God has done for him and his response to his, this greatness. But only 15% of the psalm retelling the suffering. Why so little mention of the hardships? Surely they must be of great significance. Otherwise, the psalmist wouldn't be singing the praises so highly of the one who rescued him from them. Well. I think the psalmist decided to refuse to dwell on the suffering because for him, God and God's work and, and the results of God's work in his life is more important to share than the details about what went before in the hard times. The psalmist wants to share God and his greatness, not his self and his suffering. The psalmist's response is enthusiasm and outpouring and abundant praise because the goodness of God outshone the suffering that went before. I'm reminded of the lyrics from the song called How He Loves Us by the David Crowder Band. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory. The goodness of God in the difficult situation has outdone the afflictions, has surpassed them and more than made up for them. If we go through a bad experience and God rescues us and brings us through and heals and restores us, should we continue to wallow in the suffering that went before? No, because if God has brought us through it, then that is worthy of the praise and the sharing, not the negativity. When we are eventually in heaven, are we going to spend time there bemoaning our sorrows and struggles in this mortal life that's passed? Or will we be celebrating in the moment of being with God and finally arriving with him? When we share our testimonies or stories with other folk, be they Christian or non-Christian, what do we focus on? What is the takeaway message from our declaration? The point of a testimony is to show how God has brought us through the test and to give him the glory for it. 
are we focusing on the bad and the ugly or the good, good, goodness of God? Now, I'm not belittling suffering. I am not demealing the trials and the challenges we face. I am not saying that we should ignore and forget our hardships in life, that these things don't affect us permanently and, and stick around in our psyche, because they do. Sometimes there is not a happy ending. But for those of us who do go through times of testing, most of us would say that there is something precious to be gained from these times that can be shared. It may be a resolution of the issue, it might be healing. It might be something as simple as spending more time with God and feeling his presence or hearing from him. Going back to the psalm, the psalmist chooses to write so much of the psalm to celebrate and praise God for rescuing him or his people from the suffering, but he limits the exposure and knowledge we have to this very suffering. He believes the celebration of God should have more airtime than wallowing back in his past misery. To reflect too much on the hardship is almost to say that God's salvation wasn't good enough, that his goodness wasn't abundant or permanent enough, but it was. Look at the cross. Jesus endured the trauma and isolation and suffering of the cross because he knew what lay in store for him. He knew that what lay before him would more than make up for what he'd been through. See Hebrew uh, chapter 12 verse 2. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honour beside God's throne. So, when we share how God has brought us through these challenging things that, are, that life contains, let's consider what are we focusing on? What message are we sharing with fellow Christians or with non-Christians that we need? What taste are we leaving on people's tongues? What is their take home message? Is it the suffering? Is it the negativity? Is it that smelting process that we've been through? Or is it the pure, pure goodness of God and the wonderful experience we have of him that they will remember? You know me, you know that I think it's good to talk about our struggles and share them, but we must remember to make the main point the main point, the goodness and greatness of God is abundantly worthy to be praised.